Gordon Greenwich, Jack Hobbs, Len Hutton, Arthur Morris and Victor Trumper were the men. Richie is uh, alongside me and uh, needless to say this has caused an enormous amount of interest already. Richie, who were uh, the two you went for? Sunil Gavaskar and uh, Jack Hobbs were the two I went for. Not without uh, a certain amount of difficulty in uh, leaving the others out, but that's one of the problems of selection. Any specific reasons? Because I was convinced you'd go for Len Hutton. Well, I looked at Hutton and I looked at Morris uh, to get a right-hand, left-hand combination, but uh, in the end, Gavaskar, because of his footwork and brilliance against uh, all types of bowling and the way he played the game, and Jack Hobbs, because he spanned generations and uh, I'd always had a feeling for Jack Hobbs. All right, well, we asked you to vote and have a look at uh, the way in which unanimously you agreed with uh, Richie, well not unanimously, but uh, an awful lot of you agreed with Richie. Sunil Gavaskar got 27% of your votes and Jack Hobbs 26% with Gordon Greenwich and Len Hutton at 18%. Uh, uh, so, the team has begun. Hobbs and Gavaskar are chosen. We're going to go into the middle order now. Um, numbers three, four and five uh, to be occupied and Richie, uh, it's no surprise uh, who's first up here in the number three position. Well, Bradman's uh, the first one, but that's only because we're doing it alphabetically. Now, there may be other reasons as well, but um, Bradman and eight others, and out of those I've got to choose the three for the middle order. Now, this is Bradman at the nursery end uh, before the start of uh, the 1948 tour. I started my career when he finished his, the same year. And uh, I once said to Miller that it was one of the disappointments of my life, and he came out with that famous quote, we all have a lucky break, son, and that was yours, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Not having a vote at him was a lucky break. Yeah. Only 52 test matches, all but 7,000 runs, and all but a, an, an average of 100. I mean, he's so far ahead in the Pantheon, it's nearly unbelievable. What was it mainly? Footwork, do you think? Well, uh, people said his eyesight must be better. Certainly his footwork uh, was better. He seemed to be able to judge the line and the length of the ball faster than anyone else. That was what they said. Therefore, they came up with the theory that his eyes were better. When his eyes were tested, they were not as good as some other people's in the team. So it wasn't that. It was judgment and footwork and the ability to know where the ball was going to land. All right. Another Australian comes next, as elegant a batsman as I ever saw. Greg Chappell, one of the finest players I've ever seen, and certainly one of the most elegant Australian players. Sleeves buttoned down. Saw him make a century on his debut in Perth. Saw him make a century in his last test match at Sydney. He retired straight after having passed Bradman's uh, aggregate record in test matches. And he played at Lord's the best innings for me that he ever played in 1972. Brilliant cricketer. Wonderful slip catcher in that last match where he made uh, the century to go past Bradman. He uh, also established himself as a leading catcher. Wonderful slip catcher. And others have gone past him now. Mark Wall leads. A test average of uh, 54 almost. 2400s for Greg Chappell. And you mentioned again Bradman just then. Well, next on your list is the black Bradman. George Headley only played 22 test matches. But everyone in Australia who played around about that era, Bradman himself, regarded him as a great player and uh, the people I talked to didn't use the word great loosely they didn't just toss it around but uh, they reckoned that uh, George Headley was one of the great players and West Indies didn't play much cricket in those days 22 test matches as I say for him and a great legacy of Headley's that went on to play county cricket uh, for Worcestershire, of course, Ron, and then uh, Dean, who's the grandson of uh, the great man. Interesting, I will just uh, talk about his record, because he averaged over 60 and made 10 test match hundreds in a very brief career of just 22 test matches. So the figures completely back up your thought. And then Wally Hammond, uh, who was uh, um, an enormously powerful man. Big man, but so graceful in everything I saw. I only actually saw him play in... Uh, 1946-7 when he came out as captain of the side and he was heavy then, heavily built and wasn't, he was there because uh, he felt that uh, test cricket should start again straight after the Second World War. But his record, brilliant, when he went to Australia first, didn't make 100 and uh, till he got to Sydney and hit 251. In uh, the 28-29 series, he scored 900 runs at an average of over 100 and finished his career with an average of nearly 60. And he bowled a few seamers, a formidable uh, character. Brian Lara comes next, a modern player. Yes, uh, Brian Lara, uh, well, there are two, uh, Brian Lara and Sachin Tendulkar, who I regard as being 
splendid cricketers. I saw uh, Lara hit his double hundred, 277 in Sydney. That was one of the finest innings I've ever seen. And he's in the position now of uh, holding together a West Indies side. He didn't uh, have the pleasure of playing when they had all their fast bowlers. He's got 26 Test match hundreds already, and of course, time and time again, he's uh, seeming to hold world records, whether in first-class matches or in Test matches. And, and it's fascinating to see that Lara is included, but even more fascinating to see the next man you include, a left-hander from South Africa. Graham Pollock, well, didn't play very much Test cricket, and uh, he played one of the greatest innings I've ever seen in uh, the Test match up at Trent Bridge in 1965. This is the game, Fred Titmuss was bowling there and Tom Cartwright was bowling, it was a pudding of a pitch and no one else could get it off the square. And Pollock hit the most majestic hundred. Then um, he'd already been out to Australia and slaughtered us in 1963-4. He was a fine player in a very good South African team. And worth just comparing his record with uh, George Headley. 22 test matches for Headley, 23 for Pollock. They both averaged around 60, and Headley made 10 hundreds and Pollock 7 in that short time. And next, the Master Blaster. Master Blaster came out to Australia in 1975-6 uh, with Clive Lloyd's side and didn't have a good trot until Lloyd pulled the masterpiece. This is a shot of Viv Richards playing at, uh, at Old Trafford and um, score just hammering an England attack. But in that tour of 75 6 to Australia, Richards had a bad trot. Lily, Thompson and Gilmore got at him. And then you were in the situation where Lloyd, to try to rescue him, opened the batting with him. And uh, he hit 198 in uh, the last test match he played out there. Came over here in 1976, just a wonderful player. And the same amount of test match hundreds as Greg Chappell, 24, and also an average of more than 50 for Viv. And if Viv was the, the batsman that everybody focused their, their attention on in the 80s, uh, there was a little Indian emerged in the early 90s. Yes, Sachin Tendulkar, up at Old Trafford, saw him make 100 in the last innings of the match to help save India in a test match against uh, England. Then he went out to Australia, Shane Warne's debut, he hit 148, and they still say, many of the people who saw that innings, that it was the greatest innings they ever watched. And uh, he is a brilliant player. Yeah, and Tendulkar's record, of course, is perfectly extraordinary. Nine and a half thousand test match runs, and in that time, 33 hundreds, and you feel there's still so much cricket left in this little maestro from uh, Bombay. Now then, your final choice of nine for the middle order will surprise a few. Frank Worrell, yes. Um, Frank Worrell brought the team to Australia for the Tide Test Series and did a tremendous amount for West Indian cricket. There were the three W's, Everton, De Corsi Weeks, Clyde Walcott and Frank Worrell. And Frank Worrell was the first black man permitted to captain a West Indian team overseas and he brought that team down for the Tide Test Series in Australia. And uh, he's there uh, for... A purpose, you talked about the fact that uh, I wanted this to be a team to represent me. Well, Frank Worrell could represent me any time. He was a great guy as well as a, a fine cricketer. And he made 900s and he averaged all but uh, mm. 50. So uh, in, in no way was he a mug. And people forget, of course, he died at the age of 42 from leukaemia. So, so. A, a great loss, I think, to cricket in the Caribbean in general. So we've got your, your nine. We might just have a look at that list and just confirm who they are because so many names that Richie has had to miss out on. So it's Bradman Chapel, Headley Hammond, Lara Pollock, Richards Tendulkar, Worrell, and think of the, the Mays and the Meandads and all the players who, who might have been there on, a, on another day, but uh, it's a marvellous uh, list. And